Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino and you are watching Screencast 12.5 on reactions of acids and bases. In today's lesson we're going to talk about two different types of acid-base reactions. Uh, we're going to start with Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases and then we're going to look at Arrhenius acid-base neutralizations. Uh, so let's start off with our Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions. Let's say you've got a solution of ammonia NH3. Um, we talked about ammonia being a base because it acts as a proton acceptor. Um, in an aqueous solution, that would mean that water has to behave as an acid. Please note I'm saying water is behaving as an acid, not that water is an acid. Um, we know according to the Bronsted-Lowry definitions of acids and bases, acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. So water is behaving as an acid because it's they're going to take this hydrogen or this proton and it's going to transfer it to ammonia. You can think about that unshared pairs of electrons on ammonia being negative. The hydrogen ion is positive, so we're going to see attraction between those two. As a result, we're going to form the ammonium ion, NH4+, and hydroxide. Uh, so remember, Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases, or I should be more specific, Bronsted-Lowry bases don't have their own hydroxides to produce. They're usually going to get a hydroxide ion in solution by taking a hydrogen away from water. This is a weak base, so we have a reversible reaction. We could take the hydrogen that ammonia had picked up, and we can transfer it on back to the now hydroxide ion and reform ammonia and water. That would mean in the reverse reaction, we see ammonium, NH4+, behaving as what's called a conjugate acid, and hydroxide is behaving as our conjugate base. Uh, so really what you can think of it is, is that acids and bases are going to be on the reactant side, Conjugate acids and conjugate bases are on the product side. So acid and base, we're talking about the forward reaction, who's the proton donor, who's the proton acceptor. When we talk about conjugate acids and bases, uh, it's the reverse reaction, the same idea. Conjugate acid is the proton donor, conjugate base is a proton acceptor. So let's talk about conjugate acid base pairs. So we've already identified oops, all of those as conjugate as acids and bases and conjugate acids and bases. When we're talking about conjugate acid base pairs, uh, we take a base and pair it up with its conjugate acid. So in this case, ammonia, its conjugate acid would be ammonium. And an acid gets paired with its conjugate base. So our acid in this case is water and its conjugate base is hydroxide. And really they just differ from one another, a conjugate acid and its base, an acid and its conjugate base by just a single proton. It can be a little bit abstract to talk about them, so let's do some practice problems. We'll look at the first three in your workbook. What I'd like you to do is go through and label each substance as either an acid, a base, conjugate acid, or conjugate base, and connect the pairs. Uh, so let's do this first one together. Uh, so the way I do this is I need to see what's happening to my reactants as they become products. I've got HF reacting with NH3. I'm creating NH4 plus and F minus. Okay, what I'm going to do uh, F minus and HF. So HF looks like it loses a proton to become F minus. Therefore, HF must be my acid as it's behaving as a proton donor. Um, now, by definition, I have to have an acid and a base on the reactant side of the equation. So ammonia has to be the base. Let's just check and make sure that's the case. We know that bases are proton acceptors. We go from NH3 over to NH4 plus. Yeah, that definitely looks like it's picked up a proton. So NH3 is my base. The reverse reaction, NH4 plus is losing a proton and becoming NH3. It's behaving as an acid. And since it's on the react, uh, sorry, the product side of the equation, it'll be called a conjugate acid. Again, F minus must be the conjugate base, but we'll just double check and make sure that's the case. F minus turns into HF in the reverse reaction. So that means it gained a proton. That sounds like a base. So my conjugate acid base pairs, I've got my base and its conjugate acid. And then I've got my acid and its conjugate base. All right, so go through, see if you can take care of B and C on your own. Check your work for letters B and C. Make sure that you got them labeled correctly. Uh, so for B, it's base, acid, conjugate acid, conjugate base pair up appropriately, and for C, it's base, acid, conjugate base, conjugate acid, same deal, pair them up appropriately. 
What I'd really like to focus on this lesson is neutralization reactions. So put a star next to it in your workbook. Uh, neutralization reactions are going to occur between an Arrhenius acid and Arrhenius base. And we've talked about this formula um, at least once or twice by this point in time in this unit. An acid plus a base is always going to make a salt plus water. This is a very specific type of double replacement reactions. And I know for a lot of first time chemists, double replacement reactions can be really tricky. We have a freebie though for every neutralization reaction. We're always, always, always going to produce water. The real neutralization is occurring between the H plus and OH minus ion to make liquid water. Now this shows it as reversible. I guess probably for our purposes, this might be better served as just a forward reaction only. Uh, so it doesn't matter how many H pluses are produced by the acid, how many OH minuses are produced by the base, you always make water. Um, I see people come up with weird things like H3O plus, which is acidic, so that's not really a neutralization. I see H4O2 plus, which isn't even a thing. I see HO2 minus. It Again, I've seen a lot, a lot of crazy stuff. You always produce water. We'll take care of the details of how many hydrogens and how many hydroxides are needed and how many waters when we go to balance. The salt is really where you have to do a little bit of thinking. And the identity of the salt depends entirely on what acid and base are used to neutralize one another. So we'll do some practice with this in just a moment. Ooh, I lied. Uh, all right, let's go take a look at some practice problems. Discard. Do -do. All right, um, so you've got a whole bunch of Arrhenius acid base neutralization reactions. And I just want to go through a couple of them with you, make sure we've got the gist of this. So we have H2SO4 reacting with NaOH. Um, I know that I'm going to produce water, so my suggestion would be, since you know that's going to be one of your products, just write it down. The H plus comes from the acid, the OH minus comes from the base. So really the salt is going to be composed of the cation from the base and the anion from the acid. So I'm going to make sodium sulfates. Uh, what people need to be careful about here is predicting the correct formula. Sodium, when it becomes an ion, loses an electron and is sodium plus. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion and it's got a charge of two minus. So you can't just write NaSO4. That's almost there, but not quite. Um, the formula is gonna be Na, whoops, Na2SO4. That's the correct formula for sodium sulfate. I'm gonna erase some of the stuff that I wrote so it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing when I balance. All right, I have two sodiums on the product side. I can get two sodium on the reactant side by adding a coefficient of two to sodium hydroxide. Um, I think I need to address my water molecules. I see two hydrogens plus two more, so four hydrogens and two oxygens. There. If we do this, I can have the same thing. Now I'm balanced for mass. Um, I've also asked you to name the acid just for practice and talk about the strength of the acid and base. We're going to need those in future lessons. Uh, so H2SO4, hopefully we recognize this as sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is one of the seven strong acids. Our base is NaOH, sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So I'll just use S's and W's to abbreviate. But that's really all there is to it. Um, so pause the video, try out letter B on your own, and then we'll walk through it together. Okay, we've got H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is found in soda. That's what happens when you take carbon dioxide and you dissolve it in water. Uh, carbonic acid is a weak acid. It's not on the list of our seven strong acids. Our base in this case is calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is a strong base. Again, you've just got to memorize those. If you haven't done so already, I'm not sure what you're waiting for or really going to need it. So get those committed to memory. Anyway, I digress. I know I'm always going to make water. So I'm just going to write that down first so I don't do anything careless. And I know the calcium ion from the base, Ca2+, is going to react with the carbonate ion 
from the acid to produce my salts. Calcium is 2 plus, carbonate is 2 minus, so calcium carbonate won't have any additional subscripts, just CaCO3. Uh, last but not least, go through and balance your equation. Things look pretty good with the exception of hydrogen and oxygen. So I see four hydrogens, two plus another two. Um, on the reactant side, I've only got two. On the product side, so let's add a coefficient of two, and that should take care of it. And yeah, we are balanced. Everything else is just coefficients of one. Okay, uh, we're going to be building on this concept of neutralization in future lessons and talking about things like um, using neutralization reactions to find out concentrations of unknown acids or bases, um, how to perform what are called titrations. It's a technique that's used in the lab to neutralize acids and bases and get useful information. Um, and you really need to know whether the acids and bases you are working with are strong or weak. Uh, so practice with this concept, and I know I've been harping on it, but go through and memorize your strong acids and bases. If you find yourself constantly flipping back and forth in the workbook to get to that list of the seven strong acids or bases, you have proof right there that you have not committed them to memory. Uh, so get on that if you haven't done that already. All right, that's all I've got for today. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you found this lesson helpful.